Hey gang, Vintage Composer back with another Ticket Leprechaun contest response. And Jake, you did it to me again. The other contest I entered uh, of Jake's about six months ago was for his um, Hall of Fame autographs. And of course, he doesn't think that baseball autographs or Hall of Fame autographs should be together. And we're going to change all that by the time this video is done. But doing that um, video, I ran into some autographs that I forgot I had because they weren't packaged with the rest of my organized collectibles and same thing happened with this one I found about four or five other baseballs kind of hanging around not where they should be because most of my stuff is put in these old big Rawlings cases and the uh, the boxes here individually wrapped because I don't have that much space like some people with the big unit and the big display cases so what we'll do is we'll knock through the four dozen or so baseballs I have I'm going to try to keep the action here in this quadrant of the video and put some some graphics up here overlays of stats of the players that I'm going to show you just to move it along and keep it a bit interesting most of the baseballs I have of Hall of Famers um, pretty much uh, stuff everyone's used to seeing nothing too out of the ordinary when I was collecting these about 20 years ago, I made a, per a point, if I could, if a player was a Hall of Famer, like this Johnny Bench, to get the athlete to sign, um, to inscribe his Hall of Fame induction year. Because back then, before Willie Mays and those guys got everyone thinking about, hey, we can charge for inscription fees, um, these guys didn't mind writing down any little, if it wasn't too out of, out of the order and too much uh, to write about, too many stats. They put Hall of Fame year or MVP year. So I met Johnny Bench, uh, Hall of Fame 89 was his inscription. Met him at a show, he was very personable, um, polite, he's got a great autograph, and one of the great catchers of all time. There's Johnny, one of the great stolen base guys of all time is Lou Brock, we love this Cardinal. Started out as a Cub, and he was willing to sign his Hall of Fame induction year, 1985. These are all on individual uh, National or American League balls, not the generic ones that are used in today's game. Mr. Baby Bull, master of the cha-cha, Orlando Cepeda. This I won in an auction. The ball's a little toned, but it's a nice, sweet signature with his 99 Hall of Fame year. One of the great Giants. A great season he had his MVP year with the Giants in the late 60s. Ooh, I want to say 67, maybe? I don't recall. The senator from Kentucky up here, Jim Bunning. Mr. Perfect Game as well, uh, Hall of Fame 96, inducted by the Veterans Committee. Nice looking autograph, and I did have the pleasure of meeting him in person. Talked a little politics. This is on another Coleman National League. Um, you can tell he's a politician, by the way, he was engaging with his fans. I had a really big honor of meeting Stretch, one of the great, another great giant, Willie McCovey. Um, he was going through some health, health issues uh, when I met him. He was in a wheelchair actually uh, at the show and he was very uh, lively and energetic and happy that everyone came out to see him and he was very happy to sign Hall of Fame 86. His induction year, I was really happy to have, to have met him and we miss him of course. Who else do we have here? Ah uh, yes. Hall of Fame 81 for Bob Gibson. And boy, he was a, a terror on the mound in his day, reigning through the 1960s in the National League. And he looks intimidating still, but you know, you meet him and he's just a, a teddy bear, really. Um, a, bit, a bit quiet and reserved, but you get him talking and just a smart guy about the game, pitching and hitting as well. He knew how to, how to control a, a batter's box, we'll say. Not just the batter, but the catcher who, uh, you know, followed his lead and the umpire too. He had that respect from everyone on the other side of the plate. One of my favorites, Michael Jack Schmidt, Mike Schmidt, Hall of Fame 95. Had the pleasure of meeting him a couple times and people sometimes have some, some stories like, oh, he was kind of put off, didn't want to be there at scene, but he's always great with me, maybe it's me, who knows. Uh, Mike Schmidt and Ricky Henderson are two of the guys who I've met many times and have been an absolute, absolute joy each time meeting them. This is an autograph you need in your collection, no matter what. 
one of the top two, two I think, the greatest third baseman along with Brooks Robinson. And we have another great giant. Sends a theme here. Monty Irvin, Hall of Fame 73, was very instrumental in Willie May's career. They roomed together early on uh, when they broke into the majors together. This is also on a Coleman National League. And yeah, I met Monty and he was signing until his early 90s. I recall seeing him uh, at a show after I'd gotten this autograph and just just a delight. He had a huge season in 1951. Uh, look, look up the numbers in that year uh, when he was starting out. Uh, just a really uh, inspiration to teammates. He made a name for himself early on and a part of baseball for, for decades. This is really a, a, a must have in your collection as well, Monty Irvin. Let's stick with some Giants players and believe it or not, look it up, Duke Snyder finished his career sacrilegious, right? With the San Francisco Giants, all those years with Brooklyn and LA, he spent a cup of coffee with the Mets and then finished up in 64, I believe it was, with the Giants. He uh, signed this Hall of Fame 80 for me. Uh, at this show, I believe he did ask for an extra fee to sign Duke of Flatbush. But the Hall of Fame was a freebie. or went in with the, the fee, whatever it was, 40 bucks that I spent. I got to meet him. That was a, a thrill. Another guy who had a nickname, but I don't think he was very fond of it. Willie Stargell. This is the first Hall of Famer, or the second one, I believe I got on, on a baseball. Back when I was really young, I didn't know anything about collecting, so I didn't have the wherewithal to ask for uh, any kind of inscription. Um, you know, Willie didn't care for Pops. I believe it was Dave Parker that gave him that nickname. Um, just a, another guy who passed way too soon. Classic part of the history of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Was there for life. And uh, so I got this. I'm glad, I'm glad that I did. And I'm glad that I did it in person. I don't think I met anyone with a, a more jovial look or just loud laugh as Billy Williams. Boy, he was happy to be there this day and he was happy to sign Hall of Fame 87 on this uh, Coleman baseball. The Hall of Famer of the Cubs. The second or third most recognizable behind Banks and maybe Fergie Jenkins uh, from you know pre-80s pre before Ryan Sandberg and Andre Dawson got to be part of the club. So that's Billy. And this is Ina Slaughter. Hall of, Fame, Hall of Fame 85. He signed this uh, single sign. These are all single signed. I have one baseball that's uh, got a few signatures on it, and I'll talk about that when we get to the end because it's not any any Hall of Famer on that one. But Enos, longtime player, uh, lots of Hall of Fame memories, a lot of great big home runs that he hit as well. The big country, they called him. That's Enos. One of the most attractive rookie cards I've seen that Topps has made is the 1956 Louis Aparicio. It's a beautiful looking card, the action shot and the portrait. And here's Louis on a Hall of Fame 84. A little bit of toning on this baseball. I'm not really sure what happened. This is on an American League budding ball. Uh, I met Louis. Nice to meet him and get his signature. And I'm looking forward to picking up another example of his rookie card. Rod Carew, the Panamanian hitting machine, inscribed uh, the full date, 72191 of his induction year. I asked him for that when I met him. He signed it and then he gave it back to me and then looked and says, you did ask for my Hall of Fame year, right? And I go, yeah. And he's like, okay, well, just checking. And he kind of, <laughs> a little bit of a pause, not really sure. Um, I believe he was on an episode of The Simpsons way back in the day, uh, in the character uh, of, of him. So Rod Carew, many, many hits, many, many hitting titles, and a surefire Hall of Famer. We were talking before about players you need to have in your collection, and without doubt, Larry Doby, first black player in American League history. Uh, this I won in an auction, and I was really happy to pick this up. Um, and I don't even think, I don't remember what I paid for it, but I know I didn't mind the price because this is a historic player to have. And not that far from where I live, actually, in 
a um, few towns over in northern New Jersey, there is a statue and a, a mural and a ball field uh, named after him, dedicated to him. And I plan to do a video uh, early next year showing some of the sports figures who have gotten statues in the area, including Yogi Berra, Jackie Robinson, and Roberto Clemente. And Larry Doby is one of them. And I put that together shortly and share it with all of you. One of the greatest home run hitters of all time, Harmon Killebrew. I had the pleasure of meeting and getting his Hall of Fame 84 inscription. A longtime member of the Senators and Twins franchise. The killer. You can't go wrong with a guy named The Killer hitting home runs for you. Um, yeah, just just one of those names that you, another one you have to have. It's just. By the way, here's a lesson in collecting autographs. See how beautiful this autograph is? The ink, I, would, I mean, I got this years ago, and it's just a beautiful looking signature on the ball. There's no, no smudging, no bleeding. Same with the Larry Doby. It's how clean it looks. Well, when you go to a show and you meet someone and they say, I have this pen I'd like to use, don't do it. <laughs> Bob Feller was so animate about using his new pen that he, I don't know if he was getting paid by the company to do it or what. And so I'm like, okay, fine. And it just bled. It says Bob Feller Hall of Fame 62. You can, the, the O and HOF looks like an 8. I don't know. It's all over the place. It's a really weird color blue. Thankfully, Bob Feller signed about, you know, two trillion autographs in his life. So if I need to get another one like this, I'm sure they can find them out there. So thanks anyway, Bob. But here's someone that Jake knows. Not personally, I don't think. George Kell, one of those great players in the lineage of Tiger Greats, Hall of Fame 83. Uh, I met George in person and he signed this for me uh, right up there with... K-Line and Cobb and Cochran and Greenberg and all the greats from Detroit's historic franchise, also America League Buddig. So that's a cool one to have in the collection as well. Mr. October, Reggie Jackson does not sign, oh, was charging to sign um, inscriptions and extra stuff, but he always signs his number 44, if you can make out within the loop of the J, his uniform number, always has a nice clean signature so I don't mind having the 44 in place in lieu of any other inscription. So that's Reggie's. Who's this? This is Whitey. Whitey Ford, chairman of the board, Hall of Fame 74. Another one of those guys who you think is going to be just, you know, serious business and, you know, that straight stoic face. But met him. He was as gracious as could be. Thank you for coming out. And nice to have a nice clean signature on a ball of one of the all-time, the, the greatest Yankee pitcher, I think. I mean, Mariano was a reliever, and they had, you know, Pettit won 100 games more than he lost, and Catfish and Goose and Clemens, but Whitey, Whitey's the man in my book. And he was Mickey's pal, too. This does say Jim Palmer, Hall of Fame 1990. I'm glad he signed the uh, year because I wouldn't know which way to hold it otherwise. It just kind of jumbles all his letters together. But it is Jim Palmer, um, a bit underrated in the era he was playing along with Seaver and Carlton and the end of Gibson's career. But Palmer pitched for, for three decades and three championship teams. So I like having this in my collection as well. All-time great third baseman. Yeah, here's another one. Brooks Robinson, Hall of Fame 83. Another one of those delightful gentlemen to meet. Asked me where I was from, what my name was, what I did for a living, the whole, the whole nine yards. And um, yeah, it's just great to have a bunch of Brooks Robinsons in my collection in various forms and cards and magazines and such. And we'll get to those in future videos as well. It's a lot to show. I'm going to break it down in do it in a digestible fashion. I'm gonna to try to breeze through the rest of these. I think we're about halfway through. One of my favorites, and the guy I've been collecting for over 30 years, Robin Yount. Have him on a single signed ball. 
Uh, he wasn't charging for inscriptions when I met him, which was right before he got inducted in 99. Uh, but he wasn't signing anything extra other than his name. So I guess they were, they were onto something or ready to start putting in the inscription fee uh, once he was officially in Cooperstown. But I had to have this in my collection. And there's so much of him in my collection. And that's another bunch of future videos. And here we go. Brooks Robinson's partner in crime in Baltimore, another great Hall of, Hall of Famer, and a great home run hitter who was inducted the year before Brooks. It's Frank Robinson, who was inducted the same year as Hank Aaron in 82. Uh, we lost him recently. And he, um, you know, like I said, he accomplished everything he was to accomplish. Besides Hall of Fame, uh, he was Rookie of the Year, he was MVP in both leagues, he was All-Star Game MVP, World Series MVP, Triple Crown winner, over 500 home runs, uh, first black manager. He managed the Indians while he was playing for them in the mid 70s, and Expos, Nationals, Orioles, uh, front office, worked for the president uh, of the league in the American League. He, he really did everything there was to do and he was a winner. And uh, this guy needs to be in your collection if you don't have him. Both Robin, well, if you, have a, if you get a Jackie Robinson, you can have three great Robinsons. Uh, so that's Frank. Let's get to the heavy hitters. Want some heavy hitters? Here's the heaviest of them all, right? The hammer. Hank Aaron, I got to meet him. Uh, I've noticed on many examples I've seen of single sign baseballs, he has a tendency to not autograph straight across. He kind of tends to swing up on the sweet spot, but it is on the sweet spot and it does look beautiful. You can read every single letter, see every little pen stroke. This is a beautiful example of a really nice signature. I'm really happy that I was able to uh, get out there to, uh, I went to Long Island actually, to uh, to meet him. He was at uh, Steiner Sports when they were still in, in business out there. And they were always terribly expensive um, with all their, for the most part, with all their guests. But this was reasonable and I had to do it, so I did it. And uh, yeah, glad I did the hammer. And he has a card, I believe a 1963 Topps specialty card with this young man, Mr. Cub, Ernie Banks. I met Ernie at a show and he has a tendency, he has a different tendency to really fall in love with the good looking girls that come <laughs> to the shows. You know, he sings to them, he's a, he puts on quite the performance. And then I had the, uh, I don't know, unfortunate position to be in back of a really good looking girl. <laughs> like two people back and he was still I think stuck on her. So when he finished signing his name in his Hall of Fame year 77, instead of handing it back to me, you know, he just took it and he whipped it in the air about as hard and far as he could, like a hundred feet in the air. And it landed like, you know, two tables over and I'm like, oh my God, is he gonna get smudged and whatever, but it, it's fine. It's better looking than I thought it was after all this time. Another 500 home run club guy. He had a lot of home runs too, but he had a lot more hits. Stan Musial's in the 400 home run club. I think he's tied with Willie Stargell actually all time, but a seven time batting champion. And Stan the man met him in person and he would not, or his handler said he was not signing any inscriptions, uh, which I, I don't blame him. He was, he was getting up there in age anyways, but another you know beautiful example of a clean signature Love it. Here's a home run guy with a lot of rings. I volunteered for a few years at Yogi's Museum um, in Little Falls, New Jersey. It's actually on the campus of Montclair State University, but it's actually Little Falls is the address. And got to see him a couple times, help out with tours and a couple of uh, ribbon cutting ceremonies. Nice uh, people that, that work there. His family was heavily involved and you know, gracious for the support of people coming out and the help that they receive from people from all from all age groups, all walks of life. So that was fun. Steve Carlton signs pretty much any inscription you ask for. When I do my another video, I gotta start making videos, Mike. I gotta start putting them out there of my um, magazine collection. One of my favorites is of uh, 
baseball preview from 1973 of Carlton on the cover, and he signed all the Cy Young Award years. Here's a Hall of Fame 94 from Lefty. I've met him a few times as well, and he's just a pleasure to talk to. He's a smart guy. Um, didn't say much when he was playing during his playing days, but boy, he's a he's a smart one when it comes to the ins and outs of pitching and, and the game itself. So he's in the club along with Joe Morgan, back-to-back -back MVP of the Big Red Machine. Played for a lot of teams at the end of his career. He reunited with Tony Perez and, and uh, Pete Rose in Philadelphia in 83 when they went back to the World Series. And he finished up with the A's and the Giants. And I think he went back to Houston for a cup of coffee with the Astros. He started with the Colts 45s. But he's an important player in the 70s, and he signed this Baseball Hall of Fame 90 for me when he was right in the middle of his run on ESPN doing color commentary. I drove out to Long Island to get the Dominican Dandy on this baseball, Juan Marichal, Hall of Fame 83. He's got quite a, a boatload of victories in his uh, back pocket. So you look up his, his uh, career records and some of the stuff he did. Juan Marichal. Speaking of big hitters, Ralph Kiner, the big the big pirate slugger before Willie really Stargell or Dave Parker, and the landlord of Kiner's Corner in Flushing for all those years. So much fun to hear him do commentary in the 80s and 90s, watching Mets games on Sports Channel. If you remember, Sports Channel was a paid paid service. Um, you got, I think it was Devils games, Islander games, and Mets games. Not, not the entire season, but you paid, you know, whatever it was, 15, 20 bucks a month, and you got X number of, of New York sports teams playing that, that weren't on the local channels before everything went, went national on cable. Hall of Fame 75 for the Pirate Great. Here's a Phillies Great, who was almost a New York Yankee in 1962. He was actually signed by the Yankees in the winter. Uh, before the 62 uh, season, it was released in April, but he's most known for his time with the Phillies. Robin Roberts, Hall of Fame 76. Got to meet him and get this baseball signed. This is a Coleman. Nice autograph from him as well. This one is wrapped. This is wrapped really, really tight, and I'm not going to open it because it's actually a baggie and it's sealed. And I'm not going to because I don't want to ruin anything that or smudge anything. And it's Nolan Ryan, Hall of Fame 99, which I got through his museum and foundation. Uh, at the time, it was based out of Alvin, Texas. It's since moved to Round Rock, Texas. And there's a new website with the new move. And his autograph is still reasonable. I think I got this with the inscription for 75 bucks, paid and shipped back to me. And yeah, his, his autographs are reasonable. And he's got lots of different inscription uh, choices. He signs, I think, two or three times a year. I'm not sure how much he's doing it anymore, but I'd like to get back on the site and see how much the price went up. I think it was 60 bucks for a flat item, and the inscriptions were 15 and that was like it. You know? So, yeah, this is a good thing to uh, have in your collection. I have a bunch of, actually, I sent a bunch of stuff to his over the course of a few years, and a magazine and a card. And one was seven no hitters, and one was inscribed sixty nine champs, uh, covered with him as a Met. So here's Nolan Ryan. Yeah, check out the website. And then we have Al Shane Dean Red. They called him Hall of Fame eighty nine. I got to meet him in the early nineties. Basically, spent his entire life in baseball and seventy four years. In baseball 67 years with the Cardinals alone imagine that 67 years with one franchise managed coached played he was all over the place he is a legend in st. Louis very well very well respected he's in the 80 88 tops team leaders card with Tony Pena I think it's the 88 one they're sharing a laugh together so it goes from one generation to another, passing on his knowledge. Here's the franchise, Tom Terrific. Talked before about Whitey Ford being the greatest Yankee. This by far is not only the greatest Mets pitcher in history, he's the greatest Met in history. 
Rookie of the Year, Cy Young three times, World Series champ, 3,000 Ks, 300 wins. Hall of Fame 92 is what Tom signed this one. And I got him a couple times. Uh, got him into my Mets book, got him on a large oversized, uh, oversized car from Donruss. Got to have a single signed of Tom Terrific, and I'm glad I did. And, you know, he's gone through some tough times now, and I know what that's like to deal with someone with uh, Alzheimer's and dementia. So we wish him the best, him and his family, and keep him in our minds and keep him in our collection as well. Moving along, we only have a dozen more to go. Jake, you still with me? All right, buddy. Paul Molitor, the igniter, one of the great Blue Jays and Brewers. Got this in person, another one with a funky pen that was used and it just kind of didn't fade and didn't smudge, just kind of just hanging out like a ghost or something. I'm not really sure how or why it happened, but I was glad to meet Mr. Molitor. This is basically a freebie. I got a, uh, a refund on a credit card, something or other, and I got, I got some kind of card uh, in the mail with credit and it was exactly the amount of this autograph, so I'm happy, I'm okay. Most of the other ones were through auctions or mail order. And holy cow, Phil Rizzuto, the scooter, signed this with Hall of Fame 94 in a private signing. This is a American League budding ball. Nice, clean, white, clean baseball and thin, thin ballpoint pen. And I was happy to have that. I always loved the scooter. 53 years, part of the New York Yankees organization as a player. And of course, the broadcasting second career he had one of the funniest hall of fame speeches in history really he was just a he was always a, a riot i got this dave winfield um through a private signing hall of fame 2001 nice ink on that one as well he always signs the his name short d in a slash but th this is the autograph and it comes with the holograms and I've got the matching certificate somewhere. Somewhere. This was through an auction. George Brett with his Hall of Fame 99. Ball's a little toned. Um, it wasn't game or anything. It was just a toned ball and they just happened to... I'm not sure how it worked, but this was a private signing. I got to meet Mr. Brett in person uh, after this and uh, had some other stuff to get signed, but nice to have a Single sign ball of him. Important part of Royals history. Here's an important part of Tiger's history. Another great Tiger, Mr. Tiger, Al Kaline, Hall of Fame 80. This was through private signing as well. And I wrote on the note, would you please have him inscribe Hall of Fame 84? Because I didn't remember what year it was and I wasn't too quick with the uh, stats like I am today. So thankfully he didn't take my word and and sign hall of fame 84 because if he did i would have been very very upset at myself of course he's a smart guy bobby doer's a smart guy too hall of fame 86 from the red sox great this was this was a, a private signing as well up in the boston area i think the uh, dick gordon sports clan up there who did a lot of yaz and um ted williams signings back in the 80s and in the 90s, this I won in an auction, another toned ball, but it's 1987 Hall of Fame inductee Ray Dandridge, who was a part of the Newark Eagles for seven seasons in his career. This is a Bill White National League ball. And Ray, an important part of the Negro Leagues and I always wanted one of these, and I was able to get one at a good price. I don't mind the tone. I keep it out of the light. He's fine. Speaking of Red Sox, and then you're Carl Yastrzemski. Here's Carl Yastrzemski. And this was this I got in person. I don't even know how it was wrapped like this. I must have done something. I wanted to keep it clean. I believe this was actually the same show that I got Willie McCovey at. And so I had Carl Yastrzemski sign Hall of Fame 89. 
he would sign one of two inscriptions, Hall of Fame or TC67. He was the last Triple Crown winner before Miguel Cabrera accomplished the feat a few years ago. And Yastrzemski always signs Triple Crown TC. He never spells it out. So in case you're wondering. So I got this signed. He looked fantastic when I met him. Full of life. Ready to hit another one out of the park. He was just... I mean, he was old business, but, you know, there was a big, big... Uh, crowd that came out to see him that day so it was nice to get this in person and now for the rest of the stuff the stuff I forgot I had so I thank you Jake for reminding me as I was looking through my stuff um, boy oh boy I'm going to say it again I'm going to put a video out next year <laughs> it's going to be showing if I can, I'm not going to get this out of the case I don't think I'm not. All right, I'm going. I went to spring training in Florida in the winter of February of '89, and I went to Dodgers camp in Vero Beach, and I went to Port St. Lucie to see the Mets, and in West Palm to see the Braves and Expos play. And so and this is a Dodgers ball. So I was trying to turn, and I can't get it out of here. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna try. Don Sutton, Hall of Famer, was there um, doing broadcasting, actually interviewing some players for the local. Uh, affiliate of I think it was Fox uh, or Channel 5 was no Fox back then in 89 actually there was Fox back then it was the first year uh, so I got him to sign this on the panel I'm looking to get Oral Hershage that that day too but he was tough to get speaking of spring training we went to Port St. Lucie as I said and got a few Mets on this Mets ball Don Ossie the longtime Oriole joined the Mets uh Right around this time, late 80s, got him there. Uh, right before the Mets acquired Frank Viola, the Cy Young winner and World Series champion of the Twins, there were a bunch of players. I think it was five different players that got sent to Minnesota. And Tim Drummond was one of them. And there he is on that panel. As well as Wally Whitehurst, who's on the bottom here. Terry Bross in the middle. And Terry Leach, the sidearm delivery uh, played with the Royals and helped the Mets put a run together in 88 to get to the uh, playoffs. And that's about it. So I just got a few on that. So reminded that I had that in a, uh, in a case. This was the first ball I got autographed at a show by a Hall of Famer. It's Tom Seaver on a single signed. And, you know, this is one of those things where this is the mid 80s and he was pitching for the White Sox and I didn't know any better to get a ball that would be a National League ball uh, to be signed because he was more popular, especially in our area, being with the Mets. So this is a Bobby Brown American League and I believe I played with this baseball as you can tell. It was, so I was definitely sitting in the sun and who knows where for so long and I believe he actually played with it after I got it signed too. Um, but this is a cool little thing to have. I don't know. It's just a cool thing to have. I'm going to get rid of it. It's Tom Seaver on a baseball. And that's cool. And this is a Bill White uh, National League ball that I won in an auction of the great Don Drysdale. Love this one. Always wanted a Don Drysdale. I want a Sandy Koufax, too. Um, that's, that's really breaking the bank nowadays. But, yeah, Don Drysdale, another guy who just left us way too soon. Such a tremendous talent on the field. Jumped in the broadcast booth without any issue. Part of the Monday Night Game of the Week on ABC. And one of the all-time Dodger greats, of course. 1957 is his rookie card in the top series. And this is my single sign ball. Love it. And finally... <laughs> this is not an official anything ball. This is a Newark Bears Triple A New Jersey Automobile Club. I wouldn't even know how to describe it. It's like a squishy foam. It was a giveaway at the Bears games um, that we went to go see in the beginning of the 2000s. And this is, you might be able to tell, it's the, f they call it the free, I guess, version of Ricky Henderson's autograph. Ricky, uh, was a part of the Bears the first half of the 2003 season. He was actually the 
um, I think it was the Eastern League was the was the organization. He was the Eastern League uh, All Star Game MVP that year, and then he jumped back into the uh, big leagues to join the LA Dodgers. It was his last stint in Major League Baseball in 2000, 2003. So this is Ricky. We got him. He was signing up and down the uh, first baseline. Fine. It's a Ricky on a funky ball. It's like a little, I don't know, tchotchke thing. So that's Ricky. Fine. Thank you very much, Ricky. I got lots of Ricky stuff, and I'm happy about that. Jake, I don't have the space like you do for the, uh, the big unit, so I'm going to go store all these things away. Thank you for encouraging me to find all this stuff and make this video. And as you saw, I have a George Kell baseball. So, you know, nice to be part of this in the community and do this video for you guys, but you do not have to put me into the contest because I have a Kell and I'd rather somebody else who doesn't have one get a shot at it. I do have two American League baseballs still sealed in the box from when I bought my cases of baseballs back in the day. So I got to find two Hall of Famers that played for the American League and get their autographs on these and add to the list, add to the database. Jake, good luck with the upcoming season and your collection and your channel. Hope to see you do more videos. Everybody else, thank you very much. Uh, got more videos coming up. A few more before the year is out and then we'll talk about what I'm doing beginning of next year. Got some big news and plans for 2020. So we'll see you soon and good luck with the contest and we'll talk to everybody soon.